So let's load Slib Browser Pro. So all you need is have your Maya session open and you have a couple dialogues. You can either open it through Slib Browser here on the top shelf once you've loaded the plugin. Um, and then you also have a folder icon right here. And if you've downloaded some of the other plugins, you'll have multiple ones in this shelf. So let's just click the plugin. And here you can see it loads up, loads up really quick. It's a nice, clean GUI. And what you can see here when it loads, we've, it already knows where it saved the library. Um, I use the default for right now, but you can move the library to be wherever you want it. Um, and then basically you get your main preview of the library here. And you can see it dynamically as I click. You'll have an update for the object within here and then you can see down here are the various uh, tabs for assets within the library so and if you look down here there is the folders that we're actually going through so right now we're in redshift um, for the uh, shaders so if you want to look here if I open up render settings this is kind of nice it is dynamic within the Maya session. Sorry, the windows are so quick to grab and lock in. Um, so I've just opened up render settings and what you can see here right now we're using the Arnold renderer. So right here in the drop down of Slib browser, if I switch to Redshift, here you can see that my renderer is switched to Redshift. So in that sense now it's a linked session. If I go back to Arnold, the renderer will then go to that my vector. So it's really nice that it's a dynamic link to the Maya session that you have. So it's very intuitive. And so let's go across all these bottom icons. So here are the objects in the library. Now if we go up one level and then to root, you can basically see that what we are is we're in the root level of the assets. And you can see here we have an examples folder and I just recently made a test folder. And basically now if you just go within one of them, you will see the objects that are within it. And now if we just select an object, here you can see the preview for it. And basically once you have an object that you want to use, you just right click and you have this dialog box of importing it, import at the selection point, replace what you have selected, open in Maya, open in File Browser, duplicating and renaming and deleting. Um, we'll get to some of those things in a minute. <coughs> Here we have go to the newest bit where it's uh, Kit Bash. And you can see also up top there's an export. So you can export any one of these items out light, any lights that you want to basically have in your library that you can import and export. HDRI domes, this is great. Um, what it does is it actually, depending on your renderer, it will make a HDRI uh, light shader so that the dome will actually be dynamically linked in your scene. Any kind of textures you want. And then these are the file paths for anything that you've loaded. And you can see as I scroll through on the top, these icons change. So right now we're in HDRI domes and what you can see here is you can send that HDRI to Photoshop. You can rotate the dome. You can delete the dome. Um, everything is different into the context of what's going on up here. You can see how it changes depending on the assets that you've got. Here you can do IPT on and off, freeze transformations, move objects to origin and the pivot to the bottom. That's great. And then find similar objects. Um, so it's a very, very intuitive um, selection. So let's move some stuff over. So let's uh, select the drawer and let me import it. So now if I move this out of the way, you can see now in our scene, if I hit F to frame, the drawer is basically in our scene file. Now if I hit render, we don't have any lights, so nothing is going to really happen per se. You have the dialog of basic redshift uh, HDR, 
So let us go here and let's now say that we want to import that HDR. So now the minute I clicked it you can see it did an slib dome. You can see here you have the shader parameters and then basically in here it's linked to where our library is at and it's linked in uh, the HDR. And now if I click and render it basically has that HDR loaded and already interactive in our scene. So now let's say if I wanted to load this one and import, you can see here I imported it and I didn't duplicate that um, slib dome file which is basically the same as if we go to lights and you basically create a dome light. So if I create a dome light now you can see here that's what slib uh, browser Pro is doing. It's actually already creating it, so it's dynamic. So you're not going to get multiple dome lights in your scene file. Let me delete that. And now, if basically, let me just save this image. Now, if we render, that's the dome light that we have in here. It's just a generic backdrop with it uh, hidden. Now, let me select this one, import, and again, we're just updating this one shader. And now, if we render, if I go back to our original right here, you can see that we've just updated import again. All we're doing is basically updating the HDR image and nothing else has changed. And you can see you quickly have access. I'm not having to go into the attribute editor. I'm utilizing multiple things in this file browser, which is really cool. Uh, let me move this over. So once you've really set up your own personal library, there's a lot of things that you can do very, very fast. So let's go back to objects. Let me import this bottle. And let me, instead of replace, let me select the drawer. Oops. And then right click and let's place at selection. So it's going to go where the file is at. So let's see where the bottle is. You can see there it's on the bottom. And that's based upon the pivot point of this dresser drawer. And now if we basically hit render, there we go. Now you can see something that I probably didn't mention right off the bat, which is amazing, is it's got a dynamic link to your object, your OBJ object, and the textures that you saved assigned to this object. So once you've really established your library, you can see where you can quickly cobble together a scene and start rendering instead of having to redo or reshuffle back to old projects um, that you've worked on. So let's Let's do, well, let's stop there and let me show you where the file. So what you can see here is I'm back in my C directory, user, my initials, documents, Maya, the version of Maya, I have plugins. And this is literally where I've saved the plugin for, um, for Maya to recognize for Slib. And what you can basically see is there's an Slib folder and within here, you can see a lib folder. And within here are all these contextual menus. Let me see if I can move this over. Open Maya back up. Let's move this over. So if you look over here in Slib, you can kind of see the hierarchy of what's going on here. There's a folder for HDR. There's a folder for Kitbash. So all of these match to the folders in here. And if we go inside, you can see that there's folders within. We're in the examples folder. And you can see the oh, wrong file, the examples folder. So there's a match between everything. So it doesn't have to live in the C directory. You can move it wherever you want. You can actually move it on a hot swappable hard drive as well and you can plug and play depending if you have sessions of slib elsewhere but that is really nice so you basically can do relative and absolute paths um, and then you can easily add elements to what you want 
Um, and that's something that I did relatively simple in here. I did, uh, let's go one more. I did a test folder and I just did the simple red ball. So if we wanted to go over that, so let's do another simple primitive. So we're going to do a polygon primitive. Let's do a cube. Let me hide that, hide this. And then let's measure up and then let me let me hide the grid. And then all I want to do is make a shader for redshift for now. So let's go redshift shader. I'll do a redshift material. Select the object and the redshift material. Let me assign to it. All right, so now the cube has that. And let's just do super simple color. Let's make this blue. So we've made that blue. Let me do a quick render. Here we go, we got the blue box. And basically, it's as simple as we're in this folder, we're in the text folder. We have our objects selected in Slib. Now I just select the object that I want. And you can do two things. You can rename the object already in this file, but what Slib is going to do, it's actually going to save a Maya file of this object. So whatever you name it, in the naming convention here. So let's say I'm going to call this blue. I'll call it a box. And then I've got it selected and then basically just hit export. And then export selected. And then what you can see here is the preview is not what I want it to be. So if I go over to this left icon, generate preview image, it's going to actually batch out and use a standard uh, light rig and dome within Slib, and we'll see that in a second. So let me just pause for a second. It's pretty quick. Now you can see here, it's taken a front on snapshot of my image and it's maximized it to the square. So let me see if I can do something different to highlight it a little better because now it looks flat, not like a cube. So what I did is I did a new snapshot. So what you can do here is basically in this image file, move it closer to how you want it. And then basically do a snapshot. Right click and as long as you have your object selected, see it'll update it. You know, very easy. You can go in and tweak it a little bit more. But you can see here, there's just a lot of cool parameters. Um, something that is neat. If we go to here, what I did is I just created a new cube. I'm going to up the tessellation on it. All right, let's, uh, let's do wireframe on shading. Let's go back to hiding the grid. Move this in. So let me switch to face, and then you just select the face. Now we'll move over to the kit bash element, and then right-click import. And then here you can see the fuse, and you can see this time how it's kind of cantilevered the element. So all we need to do is rotate it to where we want. But you can also go back to the, it's made a screw object, and you can see the world space. So let me try doing 90 degrees, 0, 0. So now you can see it's moved it in closer. And then if I scale this back up and let me hit fuse and you can see here now it's fused that screw in. So, you know, we could keep doing this to, you know, different parts to this and doing the same thing. And it's just a nice way that you can quickly maneuver uh, within your scene file of objects that you've already created to uh, make it work and then you, know, you can zoom it in and then fusion and then now you can see if we render 
and now you can see we've fused it to this piece of geo. So there's a little bit of cool things that we can do now with kit bashing within SLib browser that I think is kind of cool and they're obviously going to be continually updating this. But the fact that you can basically switch through here, so if we select our object and now let's say you know I didn't like that dome, let me do this dome. Uh, this is one I just started to put in and my preview is not showing up. But let's see what happens when we render. And then here you go, it's got that HDRI already put in. And I didn't have to go in anywhere within the light and within Maya's attributes. So if you get really fast within SLib browser, you can really do a bunch of things within it. Let's go back to our shaders, let's say, and then let's select that. And then let me import that. Actually, let's, uh, let's do Chrome scratched import. And then let's do a render. So you can see here, like I, all I had to do was just select within here and then re-render. And now part of this is because I fused these two guys, so I think the way the textures are going between the two. But you can get the idea of like, you can start to do some really quick fixes. And if you get adept within it, you know, it really makes it nice that you can quickly toggle between things instead of rehooking up shaders. Because if you set up your library properly, a lot of your legwork is done beforehand. And then when you're actually working on a project, it's just the scene assembly and getting creatively exactly what you want with minimal added elements of like making, you know, retexturing something or whatnot. So I think it's great. I'm still going to be messing around with SLib. And I want to see what else can I do with it and how can I push it. Uh, the other aspect that's cool is you've got this metadata. So you can, you know, save the, the version file, what it was it used for. you know, add any tags that you want in here so that you can then do a search capability, um, which is really quite neat. You know, if I basically go back up here and do bottle, and I just typed B-O-T, you can see the other two things that within my library were bottles are these two. So I find this, I'm going to really dig in. I'm going to have to build up my library with all the assets that I have. Um, but I think it can be very invaluable in speeding my process and having a really dynamic live library within Maya. Thanks.